the first thing I start out with is that we, um, you know, people like to donate things. And so um, it's important that it's 100% cotton um, because in the scale of things, 100% cotton, two layers of 100% cotton really works the best for what we can do with a homemade mask. Um, so if somebody doesn't know if it's a hundred, you know, a lot of people have a stash. I mean, I have one and I've really gotten rid of a lot of it, which is great. Uh, most quilting fabrics are hundred percent cotton and they're fine. You know, they're fine. These, this is something that somebody donated and this is great. I mean, it's just a quilting fabric. Um, so the first thing I do when I get a piece of fabric is I wash it and then I iron it. Now, when I wash fabric, <clears throat> because I do this all the time, I serge the edges so that I don't get a wad of strings and whatnot. But if you don't have a serger, that's actually no problem. Just wash it and iron it, get it. And then I fold it over and I get it as nice as, you know, I can. So what we're looking at getting is um, pieces of fabric that are nine by 14. And um, this nine by 14 piece of fabric will make one mask. I went sideways and I marked it nine inches and 18 inches from the side. So I marked nine inches and 18 inches. And then, then I went up here and I marked nine inches and 18 inches and here and here and here and here. And um, so that then I could just take, and you know, this can be done with any, that's going to fall off. Any size ruler, you can use um, just a yardstick to do this, or if all you've got is a little bitty ruler. I mean, you can use whatever you have. I just happen to have this really nice big one. And then I don't worry about using, I just use a Sharpie and I mark on it. It makes it a whole lot easier. And so these are my, these are my lines for the nine inch side. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to go up the side and mark at 14 and 28. And I'll, that's all I'll be able to get. So 14 and 28, and then I'm going to do it again over here. And people who sew, I mean, they're just, you know, they're going to be, this is, this is not hard stuff because you're always having to measure. So 14 and 28. And Lisa, gonna... what would you say to people who are willing to learn to sew to do this? This is really simple. Okay. It's really simple stuff. It's straight lines. It doesn't, it doesn't take a lot of skill to do this and and the more you do the better you get <laughs> mm -hmm. so don't be afraid to do it and don't be afraid of doing anything perfectly because um it there's really not much that you can do to mess it up good news yeah so these are just big rectangles okay those are easy we've done them with our kids, you don't have to have all the fancy. I'm gonna do it on this side so I can make sure. You don't have to have fancy tools. I just happen to like be a supply freak. I like supplies, so I have a lot of tools, and it's what I do anyway. So, um, then, if you're the kind of person that likes to cut with a rotary cutter, you can do that. But I cut my finger really bad. Um, about a month or so ago, so I'm just a little spooked on it. So I'm just gonna go in and I'm just gonna cut, and to me this is easier anyway. So the second thing I do is I want to um, make the edges nice. And you can do that of one of two ways. You can just do um, what's a rolled hem. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you what a roll, well, basically a narrow hem would be, and then I'm gonna show you another way. So okay. you're just barely rolling the edge over and then rolling it one more time. Mm -hmm. Just barely. And um, 
you just try not to burn your fingers. So here, if you can see, that's what I did. I did it, um, what is that, about a quarter inch maybe? Mm -hmm. And then a quarter inch again. Um, and this is just so that you've got a finished edge because this is what we're gonna make this into kind of an envelope. And um, if you don't have a serger and you've never used a serger and you're afraid of a serger, don't be, that won't bite you. But um, we actually, there's somebody who has a serger who's never used it. It is available to us if we need it. If somebody needs one. Well, you can do, you know what? I think it's probably easier to do it this way. We're going to turn it all the way to the top. Put it together. Iron that. This will be, you know, as long as it's at least six inches, this is six and a half inches of mask now that we have. Um, you want at least six inches because anything less is hard to fold. So I'm gonna stitch these little ends down. And what kind of stitch are you using? I'm just using a straight stitch. Now I'll say this, if you're, if, if you're a seamstress and you know, and you've got a narrow hem um, foot, somebody who I'm speaking to, if that makes any sense, they know what I'm talking about. <laughs> they can use that instead of ironing and all of that, but not necessary. We did it the old fashioned way, which is just as good. And you're using white thread. I am using white thread. Any, um, anything about the thread, please? No. And, and I'm using, I am using cotton thread, but it doesn't matter. Polyester thread is fine. Because what we want is three pleats in this fabric. And so I start at the bottom, and it's, um, you know, it's, it's really... For me, it's it's kind of my finger, and you pleat it up. You can use a pin to hold this in, or I saw those little clips on. Yeah, Facebook. those are convenient. They're great. Um, you know what? They're they they seem to be easier to use for this kind of thing, but you don't you don't have to. You can use just regular pins. But these work for you know if you've got them, use them. If you don't, just pin it. So, so there's half inch or it's really about three quarters. three quarters. Yeah, about three quarters of an inch. And um to me it's just kind of a finger. And that you see my finger down here? See the bottom what it that's kind of what I use to go by. And then I pinch it and fold it again. And this honestly, this is the hardest part of it. And it just takes a little practice. When I mean, I can't. T I started out making masks with two pleats because I really just couldn't do this, and it was <laughs> fine. But after a while, I got kind of used to it. And then it seems like that's a lot of fabric, but it's really not. That's about right. And you just mm -hmm. that's the last one. And we leave that top open because that's where they can insert the filter. So the nurses, the doctors, whoever can insert a filter here. And all I'm gonna do is stitch the edges down. One thing about making these pleats too that I find, don't make, the, don't make them up one side and then the other because it, some people you know, think, oh, well, I'll pleat here and then I'll go over and I'll pleat here it's really easier to do it all at one time. And I've seen sometimes when people tried to do it the other way, they'd pleat one way and then the other way, and, and, and it's just a mess. Um, it's just important that th this side of pleats goes the same way as this does. If you came along and did the pleats 
backwards on this side, you you just you'd have a twisted kind of mess. A twisted mess. <laughs> so each side <laughs> needs to have the open pleats in the same direction. Yes, the pleats need to be Clip gone them. in the same direction. Clip them all at the same time. Clip them at the same time. If you do it the way I did it, you won't have a problem. Because most of the time what we're gonna do, what we're gonna use to tie these on is um, bias tape. And so bias tape is gonna cover this up. So it won't matter whether it's surged or not. I use something else and so it kind of matters because you, you don't want unfinished edges anywhere because when they start to wash them, they'll just come apart. Mm -hmm. Sometimes what people do at the stage where we just had the, the rectangle folded in half, um, some people will fold it right sides together and stitch the long sides and then turn it inside out and you've got a finished side. You know what I'm saying with that? Um, why don't I do that with this one? This is another way to finish the edges. Um, I just come along and stitch. each of the edges and I'm not making I'm not using a big seam allowance that's like a quarter inch it's just really small and then turn it inside out See, this way you don't have to worry about those unfinished edges because now it's a finished edge and you'd iron that open and then you would start and you would do the folds and I just think it makes it a little thicker mm -hmm. you know here but this is a perfectly wonderful way to do it I did a lot of them like this now what to do about ties so I just, I have something called bias. It, it's not bias, it's um, twill tape. It's just a piece of cotton tape that I buy online. And you have to tie the, the bottoms. You have to do this with pretty much anything that you put on because you don't want it to fray. And, um, and then you just, I just zigzag it to one side. I zigzag it down and then I zigzag it back. I take 36 inches. So um, that's a yard, 36 inches for each side. And I just sort of center it on this little mask here. <clears throat> And at this point, I use a zigzag. And I will zigzag a little piece of bias, a piece of quill tape on. And then I turn around and I do it again. And then it just becomes nice and secure. If you would rather use bias tape, which is perfectly fine, and bias tape will um, wrap the mask. The mm -hmm. It wraps it. So, and, and you wouldn't zigzag that on. You just straight stitch it on. over. See there, I sewed it down, wrapped it over, and stitched that down. The thing about this is you're going to have to go and stitch these together too. Because if you don't, you know, it's going to be, and you still tie a knot in the end when you're finished. So I'm not gonna do that because I'm gonna take this off. 
but um but you would you just start up at one end and you'd sew all the way in fact you don't even really have to do that stitch on you can do it at one time you just lay it there and stitch the whole thing lovely enough to go over the one that i already have on <laughs> and then do you wash it um um these have been pre-washed uh -huh. um it would probably be nice if i did but i don't wash them again because most of the time especially if they're nurses they're going to take them and the, and the hospital will sterilize them for them um because mine's got all kinds of sweet smelling stuff in the laundry i mean i just launder mine as i would anything else so i don't worry about um having sort of allergy free you know i just throw it in with i just wash it so um and then the general public that are not worried about it being you know sanitary kind of thing they're going to wash it at home and um so it should be fine so this group that i've joined and i think you've joined it as well north alabama mask makers if you want to sew if you want to donate if you want to be any part of anything of this join the page and under announcements i think it is there are different forms you can fill out you can fill out forms if you want to if, if you need masks it's like who it's for how many do you need what the contact is um and it is really a central clearing house it's fantastic mary pat's become a drop-off site so people drop off supplies and people drop off masks and then we can and then mary pat who i have called my manager since day one because i'm not real organized um and she is um but it, it, it's just great and i talked to her a little while ago and she said that at this point we have 1500 requests 1500 oh. masks in huntsville right now um is 1702 Monte sano boulevard thank you and there's a front porch and there's a bin on the front porch. And so you don't even have to see anybody. But if you're dropping something off, do leave a note and say who it's from. Um, we love to know what hand stitched. Um, I know a lot of prayers go into every mask that is made. We just, we love to know what hands, we, we just love to know. And, and I always think one of these days when I'm not doing this, maybe I'll, sit down and write a thank you note to all the people who've been so kind and and um in helping with this you know it's something we can do girls guys it's something we can do